I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Michelle Bebo, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, the name of your school, you know, where you teach, and tell us what you teach. I currently teach at Castro Bley High School in Orangevale. I teach ninth grade English, 10th grade in the SCORE Academy, which is a medical academy. And I also teach 11th grade AVID this year. It'll be my third year with my AVID students. So tell us about uh, the Med Academy first. What, what's that all about? It's a, a school within a school, basically at Castro Bley High School. It is for students who are interested in sports medicine or any career related. So the students join as 10th graders. They travel together until their senior year. And during that time, they take courses that are designed to increase their knowledge and their enthusiasm for that particular field. The English section is, for the most part, a typical English class, but we try to incorporate some literature and nonfiction that will support those students in the sports medicine field. Okay, so how do, they, how do they relate? Explain how English relates to that sports academy medicine. Well, communication, mm -hmm. technical writing, the ability to read nonfiction text, it definitely gives the students the opportunity to apply different strategies. They have to have the ability to um, communicate with uh, their athletes, with their patients, with their um, physical therapists, de depending on what career they go into. So they definitely need those communication skills. It also supports them in reading a different type of text that they may see in a typical English class. Not that they wouldn't see nonfiction text, but I do try and um, gear that particular uh, reading so that they are looking at maybe a little bit more difficult uh, content or applying different strategies so that they can be more successful in that field later. And of course, if a student at a young age can, can fine tune their communication skills, it just has a positive impact on just about everything they do. Absolutely. And they also learn that sports medicine isn't always just about taping ankles or uh, the sports side of it. They do realize that there is a lot in, in, included in working with and communicating with community members and um, athletes, coaches, doctors. And so you also are an AVID teacher as well. I am. I'm the AVID teacher and the coordinator at CASA. So explain uh, the value of AVID. I absolutely love the AVID program. I've been involved for over 10 years now. And I think that what the AVID program offers students is a gateway, is a pathway, is the opportunity to reach educational goals and milestones that they may not have reached without the support. So I think that AVID um, provides a structure and a network for students that they can rely on each other where they know that they have advocates in their corner where they're being taught ways to navigate the educational system along with gaining college and career readiness skills that they may not see in other classes. And it's helping them develop study skills and all those things that they need to get them college ready. Absolutely. Study skills, time management, organization, again communication, advocating for themselves, understanding the process, understanding uh, the A through G requirements, understanding how to utilize their counseling services at, at school, understanding how to access resources. It's, it's been phenomenal. It's been an amazing program. My students gain um, fabulous experiences and skills that I think you know, they take with them, whether they go to college or whether they go into the business world. Do you find that the students who, who enter the AVID program are already motivated or the, the AVID course work motivates them to really succeed? I would say that you get a variety of students, some who are very motivated. That's obviously one of the tenets of the program. They have to be individually determined. However, you do get some students in there who may feel that they haven't been as successful, so their motivation isn't as you know, as strong as it could be. But the curriculum itself definitely supports these students and gives them, again, the skills where they're not just being successful in the AVID program, but they're being successful in their content area classes and in their electives. So they're gaining the motivation in order to be um, a good student, in order to be a you know, contributing member of their community. So the, the curriculum, yes, motivates them, mm -hmm. but not in a way that's um, just in that class. It's in all their classes. Yeah. So how long have you been a teacher? 15 years. You know, is this something you've always wanted to do? 
It is something that I always wanted to do, but I definitely got scared when I, when I arrived in college. I was really mm. nervous about it. I didn't know if I wanted to do it. I called my dad relentlessly. I called my mom. I asked for you know the typical signs. Did I play school when I was younger? And mm -hmm. my dad really wanted me to be an FBI agent. And my mom really wanted me to be happy and um, you know find a career that fit me. And my student teaching at Kennedy High School in Sacramento really solidified it for me. I had an amazing experience there, loved the students, and really um, reminded me what I wanted to do mm -hmm. all along. So in that span of time uh, that you've been a teacher, what kind of uh, big changes have you seen uh, or big challenges uh, in the classroom? You know, that's a great question. I wouldn't say I've seen big changes when it comes to students. In the last 15 years, I, I see, um, you know, very similar experiences, very similar backgrounds coming into my class. I would say there was, you know, there was definitely a period of time when the recession and economic hardships were, um, you know, affecting my students tremendously. But as far as my students go in the last 15 years, they've, they've um, you know, they've been amazing and wonderful all along. I would probably say that in the last few years with the transition to Common Core, it's been a big big change, a lot of discussion, a lot of discussion about instruction connected to the Common Core. So I'd probably say that has been one of the biggest changes. I arrived at teaching in 98, which was about a year after they had implemented the original set of standards, mm -hmm. a few years after. So um, I definitely see much more of a conversation around that in a, in a um, discussion than I did when I very first started. How do you see the, the institution of the Common Core kind of changing the way you're doing things in the classroom now and how you're trying to engage students through, through all the critical thinking and the expectation of what the students need to know? I definitely think that it's solidified the idea that my students need to collaborate and they need to be discussing and they need to be evaluating and they need to be examining their answers with each other. So it supported that idea that they need to be engaged with each other as much as they need to be engaged with me and the content. So I would say that in terms of how it's gonna change my teaching, there may be some shifts in content, but not so much that I've had to forego effective teaching practices or I've had to discard instructional strategies. I think instructional strategies will always um, remain uh, the same in terms of you know, using the most effective, but the content has definitely shifted slightly for me. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge for you a little bit to kind of maybe do some redirecting, but the end result is really what you want anyway is the communication, the collaboration among the students. It's, it's definitely a challenge in terms of um, the excitement that comes with making some shifts in your room. So what was it that inspired you to be a teacher if your dad wanted you to be an FBI agent? <laughs> Obviously this is a little different. Uh, what was it that clicked with you? When I was in my student teaching I found that I was so excited to be a part of a community that was school. And I loved school growing up so I think I just had a natural inclination toward it. But I loved being a part of a community where uh, they had the arts and they had music and they had sports and they had young adults and it was really um, you know life and, and it was a, a, a group of people students and teachers and adults and families and community that were striving toward the same goal and while I am competitive I do like the idea of working together toward a common goal and I, and I loved being a part of their lives and hearing about what they had to say and helping them navigate decisions. It was just something that clicked with me. And, it, and like I said, I think it was something I always wanted to do, but the experience just reminded me that it was the right choice. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously that choice brought you here, and it, now you are a Teacher of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District, which is quite an honor. It is, it is mm -hmm. quite an honor, thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. We've been speaking with Michelle Bebo, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for 2015 for the San Juan Unified School District. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.